Thank you. That was a great discussion. Um, so we have one other topic we want to hit before lunch. Um, one of the, the big areas that the college spends a lot of time on is the area of standards and guidelines and helping um, advise practices um, on a whole array of topics. And uh, Dr. Wald is going to talk about our initiative uh, on the IT fraud in this area. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, so I'll make this uh, quick and pain-free since I'm the only thing between you and lunch. Um, so what this really is, this talk, is I'm just reporting on something that we've uh, engaged in for about a year now, uh, trying to get this together. Um, I don't need to make the sales pitch here. I think um, most of you know that uh, IT really, uh, radiology practices face IT issues really uh, around the clock. It's the backbone of filmless environment. We acquire, interpret, distribute, manage digital imaging information all the time. And then we have to provide access to that critical data at the point of care. Uh, and a, a lot of that responsibility really falls on the radiologists. Um, we all have to do this in a secure and efficient manner. Uh, and um, really, some people like to think of radiology now as information business. Uh, IT uh, you know, use is also critical to the quality of patient care. Uh, it obviously impacts the speed and the accuracy, how we report imaging examinations. Uh, it can also help us leverage uh, consultative um, uh, services that we can provide and subspecialty reads. Uh, and we also need it to really handle the increasingly large complex data sets when we do perfusion or cardiac imaging and so forth. Um, so really, uh, radiologists should consider um, a, a core IT knowledge as a, as a core competency. Now the problem is that, uh, of course, most of you probably know that this is not part of radiology residency, that isn't taught at medical school, and, and really uh, most practicing radiologists are very ill-equipped to handle these challenges. So the ACR leadership uh, recognized this need to try and fill this knowledge gap. And when we looked at um, what's in the current uh, practice guidelines, it turns out there's actually very few guidelines that had IT content, and those that did were actually rather technical. So I think there was a total of eight guidelines that, that had IT content. So really, that, that offering was not fit to, to cater to the needs of, of radiologists in this rapidly evolving world. So uh, Commission on Quality and Safety and ACIT Informatics Committee took this on. And, um, and so that's really what I'm talking about today, uh, what we've been working on. Uh, we're actually in the process of creating um, a uh, reference guide in information technology for the practicing radiologist. So it's written at the level of understanding of the practicing radiologist. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna call it ACRIT manual uh, for, for ease. Um, it's really supposed to be a living, single living document that we're gonna keep up to date uh, on a fairly frequent basis so that it can evolve with rapid changes in technology. And that's actually one of the reasons why we didn't choose to create a new guideline uh, on IT because the guideline in the American College of Radiology is subject to a rather um, careful and arduous but also lengthy process of review. And uh, we felt that this type of content uh, probably uh, ought to be more of a living document. Um, th this is uh, the task force leadership. Uh, we're, we're looking at all of the content. Uh, this is really a humongous uh, collaborative effort and I can't thank all the contributors enough uh, what you see here is uh, a bunch of contributing auth authors. I think there's also a slide of the uh, section leads. Uh, you can see there's a large number of people that are either contributing content or they're leading sections. The section leads actually uh, are responsible for the uh, topic for their section. Uh, they can solicit authors and uh, then coordinate the writing, um, protect the confidentiality of the work, and then operationalize the shared content creation. Um, we've sort of set the expectation that most, most section leads would be involved for about three years and then they can help us sort of find succession because this is gonna, gonna require continual work. So a big thanks to all of the volunteer participants. I think somebody mentioned it earlier, with, I think it was Mike Peters, that, uh, that one of the hallmarks of the American College of Radiology is that it can really bring in enormous uh, manpower uh, in, the, in the way of volunteer doctors that uh, if, if you can uni unite them behind a cause. Um, the way we went about this, um, we set an initial high-level outline, uh, listed the topics that we think uh, needed to be covered in this version one. Um, the section leads don't really have to adhere to the template that we developed, but it, it uh, hopefully helped them get started. And um, we use SharePoint technology, that's actually the template itself, it's not interesting. But uh, we used SharePoint technology and created wiki spaces for each, seg uh, for each segment, for each topic, so that people could do uh, collaborative online document editing and sharing. 
uh, and that's, that's worked out uh, quite well for the most part. Um, here's here's uh, just a screenshot of how that works. So it's actually the first time the college has used this particular process and, and um, you know, it's kind of an interesting um, template perhaps going forward for uh, collaborative document development at the college. Where are we with this? Um, I told you we're at, we've been at it for about a year now, uh, starting from thinking about it to signing up all the authors. Um, so the content uh, creation is still underway. I've seen a number of articles come in in the last uh, week or two. Uh, we uh, do a leadership review, so I look at all of them. Uh, and then some of the domain experts uh, look at the uh, content itself. Um, we will have to perform some sort of general editorial functions. We're creating this from scratch. So if you think about it, we can't immediately hyperlink all the content because nobody who's writing something knows what the other people are doing. So we have to sort of start at, at ground zero, build the initial content, and then we have to take a step back and begin to sort of interlink the content and make it searchable and accessible and, and cross-reference things. And, and so that's, that's going to require quite a bit of work. And then we have to basically decide on, a, on an appropriate content, man content management system that makes this content accessible uh, to our users. There will also be an external review by SIM resources. Uh, we may have an opportunity to publish some of the content in, in abbreviated form in the JACR to get the word out to members that this is available. We'll also feature this at the AMCLC next year. That's the annual meeting for those of you that are not so familiar with ACR business. Uh, so we're hoping to get this out uh, probably no later than the first or second quarter of next year. And then this will become a living document, as, as I said. So, you know, in summary, we're hoping to equip practicing radiologists, uh, close this educational gap that I mentioned earlier, uh, and make radiologists more informed users of IT infrastructure that, so that they can participate in a more meaningful way at their institutional level with their IT folks and become a resource for them and really become, you know, position radiologists through this, uh, through this knowledge uh, to become efficient practitioners of information business. So uh, hopefully this will be uh, accepted well by the practicing radiologists. Again, I have to thank all of the uh, authors and section leads and the leadership to, to, uh, to make this happen. It's a big collaborative effort. Um, so that's, that's all I had to say about that. Are there any questions? You're all hungry.